So um, I'm Daryl, I'm a personal trainer, work at the gym group, and I've suffered with suicide, depression, anxiety, stress, addictions, and that's the other side that people don't know. It's an unfortunate one, but it is the whole truth. When did you know you had mental health issues? Like, when did you think your you mental health was through to that point? I think I've always known that I was a little bit different in the way that I always seem to struggle. I would say high maintenance, but somewhat difficult to deal with. And I've always known that myself. So the first time I knew I had depression on its own, I was probably in the 20s. And I think I used to mask it back then, alcohol, a bunch of different drugs. Downside is you fast track forward and it then becomes a habit. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. And when you don't deal with it like I did, I got to my mid 20s and I had no life. I'm not at all. And I was so angry, but I couldn't cry. I had, I had a mixture of being so angry. And then the moment I'd come up to cry, like, I'd be like, I need this release. And then it just it never come. Is this normal? You know, like, is this, is this is this a normal thing to be so sad and just almost feeling pathetic in yourself, but then you can't even release your own emotions? It was just weird. Being solitary, keeping away from people, it's, it's safe. That's why people do it. The lonelier you are, the better you feel if you're suffering with depression or suicide. So I didn't get help because I felt like I was too superior for it. What do I need help for? <laughs> why, why, why do I need to get help for just feeling a bit bad? While I was sort of crumbling and destructing my own life, my family would see me and I was just like, do you not think you should maybe do something? And I was like, yeah, uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. yeah, we'll do, I'll get, I'll get around to it. I think I'm about 26, yeah. And I had a girlfriend at the time. Life was kind of okay. I'd recently qualified for gym instructor, so it's level two, basic. But I couldn't find any work, and then in the summer, it would have been May, which is kind of ironic that I'm shooting this, and about the same time. I woke up one, one morning and I just, I knew I had depression. I knew it, I just knew it instantly. And on that morning, I just, I went in my bedroom and my knees buckled for the first time ever. I just, I buckled. You know, like you see on a film, and someone's really dramatic at the start of just the fall. It would be with that, but in, in real life, and I just buckled, I fell on the floor, and I literally, I cried for the first time in probably five or six years. But then I had a moment of like pure and raw, just like authenticity, and I just, in that moment, I was just like, wow, life sucks. I can't go through, I didn't have the energy or the strength to go through another bout of depression. And again, it's the cycle of going through it, you have to deal with it, and it is, it's like a cycle. So I just decided, and I knew in an instant, I'm done. I'm done. Just I, decided there and then. Yeah, I knew. I can't, I can't do life anymore. Yeah, so I, I knew, knew that I was going to take my life. I absolutely knew it. But I didn't feel bad about it. This, this is what freaks me out. And I think, when you are suicidal, there's, there's two different types. You've got the one, like me, where you find actual peace and serenity, you know, and the fact that, like, you know what, this is going to be done. All this pain, all this struggle, all this like mental torture that you're just like bashing yourself with every day, that's going to end. But then you've got the other type that are just, they're toying with the idea, you know, playing around with it. Oh, do you know what, I can't handle life, I think, I think I'm going to do this. I didn't think I already knew. Yes. Out into action mode, so it went, oh, I think I'm suicidal, it's like, I am, I'm done. My senses really just sprung into life. It's, it's the most surreal thing I've ever been through. It was like a summer day, I'd say a bit further on in May. So it was summer, it, were, it was sunny, it was so, like, everything was just so poignant. Everything stood out. It was like, the sky were extra blue, the clouds were extra white, the, the trees were extra green, and you know, everything it was just, it was just ridiculous. And I remember sort of looking out a window thinking, oh, what a nice day. I'll miss this. This is what, and what I, I, it's like I appreciated life at the end. 
So some people will like this bit, some people won't, regardless this is how it is, because this is what happened. At this point, I don't really believe in God. Yeah, we're brought up around in religion, so I was like, okay, you need to prove that you're real. Within a second, like literally one second, my phone rings, and I'm just like, ah, oh, so inappropriate. So I look at my phone, and it's my girlfriend at the time, just like, so I talk to her, blah, 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 baby, I gotta go. This is not happening, I'm not having this conversation. But yeah, so she, she was reason number one. So I asked her, sign, phone rings, girlfriend, reason number one, ignored it, had no clue. Changed my path, started walking in a different direction. Asked the same question again. Same question, God, you need to do this. Give me a reason, give me a reason to live. Prove that you're around. Within a second again, and I swear to God, when I say a second, I mean a second. My brother's on the phone. I was like, ah, oh, dude, what is going on? And can people see I'm in the middle of something here? You know, I'm having, a cr I'm having a moment here. So I have a quick conversation with him, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I part him off, done. Reason number two, ignore that as well. So I then went silent, and I start walking, not really knowing where I'm going, just knowing the action that I'm going to take. And I know I'm going to do it. So then I hear, like in the background, I hear all this like kind of sort of light rumbling. And it was just like the sound of traffic on the motorway. That's all it was. And I was like, done. That's where I need to be. So I followed it. I followed this sound. And I started feeling all this peace come over me, nice calm, sort of tranquility. And I loved it. It, it was just, it was, to me, that was bliss. It was my first moment without torture. So then when I get to the bridge, It almost feels like I'm not going to do what I'm doing, but I know I am. I'm drinking heavily at this time. Because I, I know, what I'm thinking is, I don't want to mess this up. So as I'm doing this, I get to my third reason. Spiritually, things always been free, so whether I'm insane or not, I don't know. I don't think I am now, but I don't the time. Just as I'm actually about to do the action, I decide, I get my phone, smash my phone, Throw it into the environment, don't need that. Why do I need communication? I ain't talking to anybody. The keys to my house, pull them out. Do I need this? No. Oh, again, done. Why do I need keys? Don't need a house. As I like take a leg over the railing to do this, and I'm gonna jump straight down into the middle of traffic. I take one stride over, and just as I'm about to pull my other leg over, I just feel like some hands grip hold of me. So this, this guy comes out of nowhere and just sort of bear hugs me from the back and I've got one leg over, one at the back, and he just like bear hugs me just like, what are you doing? Now at this point, obviously, I've got three liters aside and I've fast tracked it. I'm, I don't even know, I just, I just know it's time. I'm, I'm. So this guy, we get into some kind of like 20 minute struggle and he's like, you just got to tell me where. It's like, dude, you need to just, you don't know, you just need to let go. Just be done, this ain't your problem. I can't take you with me. The third thing that happened, he said something to me and it just, it blew my mind because what he said to me is, he said, he always goes on a bike ride with his wife and every time they always take the previous bridge. Always, without fail. And he said, for some reason on that day, at that time, on that particular ride, he felt like he had to take the next bridge. He had no idea why, not a clue. And he said when he stepped onto the bridge and he saw me and he knew immediately why he felt that. So when he told me that, I was like, okay, you've come in threes, Bravo, okay, I'm there, I believe, okay. I'm good, you've got me. Did you ever see the guy again? No. Never seen him. If, do you know what, if, if he does, I, I would love that guy and his wife to get in contact if this, because they must stand out. That has to stand out for them. What would you say to him? Oh, just, it's simple. You did what you had to do. He did what he had to do, and um, I'm grateful for it, even though I, I hated him. I did. I hated him for so long, so I was like, ah, oh, the guy stopped me doing what I needed to do. 
The guy's amazing. He did a great job. Which one is Peter? Oh yeah, I love to speak to him. So, what was your journey from then to now? From that moment of the suicide, the first week, pure bliss, love life, from that point on, I went down and down and down. But then at this point, I think it was about a, a couple of years in, I decided, you know what, I need to get a life. I have to get a life. I've survived this to live. I chose death. Life chose me. So I thought, what are my passions? Where, where, if I'm going to do, if I'm going to do this thing all life, how do I spend it? My passions, health, fitness, people, making a difference. That's why I followed this this room. I, I, I get so much from it. Ironically, this is what's weird about it. Ironically, my passion is people. But yeah, I'm such a like lovely person. I do this type of job socially, so I can fulfill that kind of, that need. But then I go back home and it's the, the whole solitary, suffering silence, you know, deal with depression, deal with anxiety, because they're not gone. Still suffer with them. So I need to live up to that, um, that kind of social image of being fit, you know, being healthy. So people look at me and they judge me because I will look and I will talk and I will sound and say, oh, well, you, you're not, you don't fit that kind of stereotype. Well, oh, that's because it's a stereotype. Most of lives, the whole point of this campaign is that most of us just think being sad, feeling lonely, being depressed mm -hmm. isn't a, like, you know, it's just a thing you, you do never talk. What would you say to some guy watching this who really thinks that? You'll end up as a successful version of what I try to do. You'll end up there. Or you're going to wake up in a prison, you're going to wake up in jail. You're gonna wake up in some scenario that you can't backtrack out of. If I, if I were to genuinely talk to guys, I would honestly say to them, get over yourself, get over your ego, get over your pride. Emotions are emotions. They're quite happy to express, oh, you know what, I'm angry. And I'm quite happy to do that, why? Because I'm a guy, this is what guys do. We're angry, we're masculine, yeah, I'll show my anger. But I'm not gonna show my sensitive side, because obviously, I'm a guy. I've learned my emotions tell me how I should be. They tell me what I'm feeling, they tell me if I'm right, they tell me if I'm wrong. So I acknowledge them, I don't know them like I used to. Plus I try not to mask them. So if you're gonna try and mask them, you're gonna end up with issues, you're gonna end up in trouble. If they feel that way, then it's valid. But then tell somebody else. And what I really needed was someone to just stick an arm around me, didn't have to be a proper one, but it could just be metaphorically, yeah? Just pop an arm around me and say, do you know what? It's gonna be all right, even if that's not true. I just needed someone else to just reciprocate what I were telling them. I would tell anyone in my situation, or a similar situation, you have to tell somebody else. You have to. And you have to get real with yourself about what it is you're struggling with and then take action.